Welcome. In this video, we will be taking a look at some more derivative rules together. We will start with the product and quotient rule. So when we have uh, two uh, terms multiplied together in a certain function, it might be helpful to be able to take their product without simplifying um, using multiplication and division. So the first um, one we'll take a look at is the product rule. And again, this is taking two terms of two terms multiplied together in a function. <clears throat> we would say that we're going to take the derivative of the first alone times the second plus the first function or the first term times the second term's derivative. So there's really two derivatives that happen in the product rule in the collection of these four terms. So let's consider walking this through. And again, the, the letter here, the F and the G, don't necessarily matter. Um, it's not necessarily the, the function name that matters. It's really the pattern that we're looking for. So we could have equally said that with, this was, you know, say, say H prime times G plus hg prime. This would be kind of a shorthand if you wanted to do it with an h and a g function. So let's just consider that pattern together. In first example a, we have one term which is 2x squared minus 7, and then we have a second term separated with the parentheses that would be 3x cubed minus 6x. So this overall f prime here, we could take it as a product rule. Um, this is allowing us to, to do the product rule instead of having to multiply everything out and then using just a regular power rule. So our pattern would be, again, take the derivative of the first function. That would be 4x for that first function's derivative. We would rewrite the second term, which is 3x cubed minus 6x as it is, plus we're going to come back to the first term and just write it in its complete form, and then times the second function's derivative. So if I take the derivative with the power rule in that second term, that would be 3 times 3, which is 9 times x squared, and then minus 6x has a derivative of just 6. So this collection of terms here would be sufficient for the product rule, and that would be our final f prime. So we're taking the derivative of the first times the second, plus the first times the derivative of the second. Just to introduce, uh, we will take a look next at the quotient rule. This is when we have a function divided by another function, or we can consider any rational function we could use the quotient rule with. So if we take a look at the definition, if we have some function we'll call f over g, we're wanting to take a derivative of a quotient like this, we would say the first uh, function or the de denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the derivative of the denominator times the numerator function in the numerator there. So notice that we do have a subtraction in the quotient rule that we want to make sure is, is there. So the order here does matter for the quotient rule. And then finally, we want to divide that quotient rule with the, uh, the g function or the denominator quantity squared. So another kind of shorthand um, notation, if you want to write on the side, would be uh, we want the denominator function, d, times the numerator prime, the derivative of the numerator, minus d prime, denominator prime, times the numerator, and then divide by the denominator squared. So that's maybe a shorthand that you could use if you'd like.
Now, we want to be careful with using uh, d as a function name because we're already using d as the derivative notation um, there. So uh, we want to be careful with that. So again, this denominator or this uh, derivative notation d dx just means take the derivative of this function with respect to x. So the derivative with respect to x, or my input variable, derivative with respect to x. So let's go ahead and try uh, part b together with that quotient rule. My overall derivative is going to be h prime of x. And I can start out by just writing my denominator. times the derivative of the numerator, that would be just 2, minus, I want to do the derivative of the denominator, which is going to be 6x minus 5, and then times my numerator function. All divided by the denominator squared. And for this one, we'll keep those parentheses around. And that looks uh, to be complete. So that's the general rule for taking a quotient of two functions. We'll be using these uh, product and quotient rules throughout the course. So we'll get plenty more practice, um, even in the problems that we do in the next section. The next couple rules, we'll call those rule 7 and 8, is the exponential rule and the log rule. So we have first the derivative of the e to the x term. We took a look at in the last video um, just an e, value e is a constant. And so when we consider e to the x, that would be a, an exponential base e. And exponential base e is actually its own derivative. It's kind of um, a wonderful function. Uh, it uh, has its own, its functional value is equal to its derivative at any point in the function, which is kind of a wild thing to think about. If we have any exponential base b, we have to adjust this. Uh, since it's base b and not base e, we have to adjust this to uh, b to the x ln b. So rewrite our exponential times the natural log of the base. And really, that's happening with the e to the x as well. If I consider, if I did that same rule, rewriting e to the x and natural log of the base, well, from algebra, hopefully you remember ln e is the identity for exponentials, and so that actually is just 1. And so that reduces down to just e to the x itself. So e to the x is its own derivative. Anything b to the x, which is b is any uh, positive number base here, that can be uh, b to the x times ln b. And again, here b is any positive number, and b is not equal to 1. That would be the qualifications on our base. If I consider uh, the logarithm rules next, we have the natural logarithm, ln x, is going to have the derivative of 1 over x. And in a similar fashion, log base b is going to have the derivative 1 over x, and then divided by the ln b. So 1 over x times ln b there. So let's go and jump into a few examples with these building blocks and consider how we would take each derivative. First, we'll go with f prime of x in part a. We have 6e to the x. So with a constant multiplier rule, we would have 6 surviving in our derivative 
times e to the x. e to the x is its own derivative. And so that does not change. That whole term will just continue to be 6e to the x. The next term we could have is a constant multiple of 7, and then times 4 to the x power. So 4 to the x power would be really the b to the x, where b is equal to 4. And so we would rewrite our exponential times the natural log of the base. So that derivative there would be 7 times 4 to the x times ln x, or ln 4, excuse me, the natural log of the base. And again, we come up with a constant, minus 3, we'll recall is just going to have a 0 derivative. So there's really nothing here that I can simplify at all. Um, so I'll just leave this 7 times 4 to the x, ln 4 for that last term. And we can call that one good. Part b, um, for the g of x function, we have uh, some natural log functions. So we could call this g prime of x. If we take the derivative of negative 9 ln x, we could say that starts with negative 9 as a constant. And since natural log has a 1 over x derivative, negative 9 times 1 over x would just be negative 9 over x. So we could just put that x there in the denominator. That will be our first term. We'll notice in the second term that there is a product rule. We have 2x and 5 to the x. So here's an opportunity that we could use that product rule again. I'll just kind of give you guys a shorthand again if we want to have the first derivative or the derivative of the first times the second plus the first times the derivative of the second. So if I take the derivative of the first term, that would be just 2 coming from the 2x times the second function, 5 to the x power plus 2, to the, uh, 2 times x, that's my first term, and then the derivative of 5 raised to the x is another exponential base e, so we rewrite the exponential, take the natural log of the base by definition. And that would be our product rule with that last term. So we'll leave that one um, as it is. If you want, you can do a little parenthesis here just to show, and really for the previous problem, to show that those two are just separate terms with product. Looks like we have a third value here with the natural log of x as well. Um, if we consider this part C um, for h of x, we also have really a product rule going on again. We have natural log as 1, and then this parenthesis function here as a second function. So we'll try to apply that product rule one more time. So for h prime of x, the overall derivative, we can take the derivative of the first, natural log, would be 1 over x times the second term, and we can add to this the first term in the product, ln x, times the derivative of the second. And now when we take the derivative of the second, we have 5x to the fourth plus 9x squared, and then this last term we might need to be a little bit careful with. Negative ln x is the same as negative, or sorry, negative 1 over x is the same as negative um, x to the negative 1. And so we'll still apply the power rule on that last term. Bringing the negative 1 forward would give us positive 1, and then we'll have x raised to the negative second power.
And for this one, we'll just keep that as it is with that product rule. And we don't have to necessarily simplify any further um, with that. That one is good to go. Here we come to the uh, last derivative rule that we will learn from this section. And this is the chain rule. So um, this is where we're going to consider um, really the derivative of function uh, that would be made up of a composition or a composition function. So when we consider a chain rule, we're thinking of a function, say, f, that's evaluated at some other function inside. The way we would do the chain rule derivative would be Take the derivative of the outer function um, evaluated at the inner, and then take the derivative of the inner function. By itself. So there's really two parts of this chain rule. One is an outer derivative and one is the inner derivative. So let's walk through kind of the inner and outer derivative for um, a. This is an f of x function. And then after this, we'll maybe give you guys a shorthand version to consider this as well. So if I consider the derivative of 3x minus 4 raised to the second power, I can consider there's kind of like an inner function here that's being raised to the second power. So that inner function we can consider as kind of that 3x minus 4. That's what's being raised to the second power. So the first thing I wanted to consider is what's kind of the outer derivative evaluated at this inner derivative. We consider this as really a power rule problem because we have a power of 2. And so the first part of the derivative, we're just going to bring down 2. And we're going to raise the stuff, whatever is inside, to the n minus 1, which would be just the first power here. So the initial outer derivative would just say, bring down your power, multiply by the stuff, raised to the first, if you prefer. Now, the second part, that g prime of x, is really representing what's the derivative of that inner stuff that we kind of ignored. And so the derivative of this inner function would be just 3. 3. So we have an inner derivative and an outer derivative for that chain rule multiplied together. So if we wanted to, in this case, it's easy enough to kind of consider simplifying 2 and uh, 3 give me 6, so we'd have 6, 3x minus 4, or we could say that's 18x minus 24 for that derivative. I wanted to consider simplifying that down. So one way I can consider as a... Um, Shorthand here, if I have a derivative of some function f of u, where u is a function of x, I can say that that's going to be f prime of u times u prime, or the derivative of u. That's another way to, to represent this, is if we have some function of x inside of our overall function, we want to take the derivative of that outer times the derivative of that inner u function. Another way we can represent that. So let's take a look at a second chain rule with their exponential function. Here for the g function, we have an overall exponential um, problem. 
but we have an exponential with some other function of x in the exponent. So that exponent there we can consider as really kind of a u if we consider that shorthand notation. That's the inner u function we'd like to call it that. So here uh, I want to take again the derivative of my outer function, insert my u, and so since the exponential itself we would say just the regular derivative of e to the x is itself e to the x. We would say first, this is going to be e raised to whatever power I have. But again, since we have a function of x in that exponent, we want to take the derivative of that u function and attach it. So that would be, in this case, just 2x. So here our derivative for this exponential would be just the regular exponential, x squared minus 8, and then times the derivative of the exponent or the inner function, which is 2x. The natural log will look uh, fairly similar, uh, but we're just now using a natural log rule. So h prime of x here. Again, just to consider a normal natural log of x, we said was the derivative 1 over x. So here, generally, we're going to consider taking the 1 over what we're taking the natural log of, and then we'll consider the inner power. So this would be equivalent to 1 over x, but now it's a function of x. We'd have to write 5x cubed plus 7x squared. And then if we consider kind of a u in this problem, that inner function is really the 5x to the third plus 7x squared. We could consider taking u prime. And that would be 15x squared plus 14x. And that's what we would multiply here. 15x squared plus 14x. Now, we could simplify this a little bit and just put that in the numerator if you'd like. So we have really the derivative of the inner function divided by that original inner function. So that would be our natural log chain rule. And we'll do part D as well. This is the last uh, example for the chain rule we'll have for this video. We have a cube root of x, 5x plus 7. So one way I could rewrite this before I take a derivative is 5x plus 7 to the 1 third. And so we're really doing a power rule outside, and then we'll have to take the derivative of that inner function. So overall, it's really a power rule problem still. We can take f prime here. We bring down the uh, one third and raise the contents here to the one third minus one, which is negative two thirds. And then we need to take the derivative of the inner function, or u prime. And the derivative of the inner function there is just going to be five. So if I wanted to summarize this with maybe some positive exponents, you could rewrite this if you'd like with 5 and 3 gives me 5 thirds. And I'll have a 2x plus 7, or sorry, 5x plus 7, and that's raised to the positive 2 thirds in the denominator. So that's one way we could rewrite that with positive exponents. And that would be complete for that derivative. So just to consider um, 
these again with the chain rule. If we went back maybe to that first problem, both the, the first and the last problem here that we did here were very similar in style with the chain rule. If we look back at that first one again, we're taking really an overall power rule that we have to <clears throat> bring down a two <clears throat> and then raise the contents to the first power and then multiply by that inner function and that function, uh, for instance, again, the u here would be 3x minus 4. So we did the same kind of idea with uh, problem A and problem D. So in the next video, we'll take a look at more practice with the chain rule and other derivative rules. But this list of nine derivative rules is um, all you have. So I uh, look forward to seeing you in the next video. And... Uh, Keep practicing those derivatives. I'll see you in the next one.